Well folks, the quest to develop a realistic test cutting medium goes on. As you've seen lately, I've been experimenting mainly with ballistic gel and uh, it has its issues. So now I'm actually looking into something else as a hopefully more realistic alternative. I'll comment on that a bit later. And um, one of my viewers, Gerald von Überwald, was actually nice enough to make this metal mold for me. This is just one side, it comes in two pieces. And um, that's pretty much required for pouring the ballistic gel because it needs to be heated up to a very high temperature. It has to be around 132 degrees uh, Celsius or 270 Fahrenheit. So, um, and also the other problem is that you need something that is not porous at all. And he actually has a put a finish on there, just pretty smooth. And even so, it was very hard to get this stuff out of the mold because the gel sticks like crazy. So my first attempt at using the mold, well, this definitely looks better than what I came up with before. Uh, it's about average leg size, I would say. On a thigh and um, again the problem with the uh, bamboo stick shifting in there I tried to center it as much as possible but it just keeps drifting as the gel solidifies so I would really need to come up with something to hold it in place you know nails or pins or something and um, again the gel has some issues like that high friction as I was already talking about. I'm still going to test this one here as well but uh, I'm also looking at something else now namely silicone rubber. There is a company called Smooth On that makes what they call dragon skin silicone rubber and that seems really interesting. They offer different types of silicone rubber which have their own physical characteristics and uh, they are actually also used to make uh, suture practice pads where you have different layers you, know, you have basically a skin layer, fat layer, muscle tissue and uh, those are sufficiently different and that really looks very realistic. They actually have a demonstration video where they cut into it first, open it up and, and then suture it back together and it really looks quite close to real tissue. It's pretty impressive actually. So that's very interesting. I'm going to try that out. Really the only drawback is that the stuff is kind of pricey. I mean compared to something like ballistic gel at least where you have to only have to buy it once and then you just remelt it and recast it. With that stuff well as soon as you've cut it up you basically have to discard it and make a new one. Although I guess I could try to suture it. Uh, kind of first aid on a battle wound. <laughs> that's Definitely interesting too, but um, yeah, overall definitely a lot more pricey and uh, as it is right now I'm financing it out of my own pocket. Uh, if any of you want to contribute to this project, I don't expect it, but in case you do, uh, you can actually go to my channel page and uh, in the about section you'll find a link to my PayPal address and also a link to my Patreon account. So if you want to help fund a better test cutting medium, that's a way to do it. Uh, what you could also do is make suggestions for uh, specifically bone analogs. That's something that I'm also still trying to figure out. Uh, wood, of course, is one option. I don't really want to use animal bones because, well, for one, I've already mentioned my problems with the meat industry. I don't really want anything to do with that. Um, the other thing is they are, of course, pretty messy. If you want to remove the flesh from the bone, uh, from what I understand, usually it's either boiled or treated with chemicals and both methods alter the physical characteristics of the bone. They're almost likely going to make them uh, either harder or easier to cut or break. So that's not ideal. Like I said, if you have any suggestions, uh, feel free to uh, send me your ideas. And uh, what you can also do if you want to send in a mold of your arm, for instance, uh, in case of the silicone rubber, it doesn't really matter what it is, if, it, if it's a plaster mold or whatever kind of mold, as long as it's reusable, that would definitely be helpful. So if you have prior experience with mold making, which I don't, then you would definitely be able to help. Uh, I can cover the material costs and shipping costs, of course, for the mold. And um, 
yeah, just any other ideas if you have any. I have also registered a separate email address for my channel, what they call business address on YouTube. So again, you'll find that in the about section on my channel page. But uh, please don't use that for personal messages or questions or anything like that. Please only use that in the case if you want to send me something or contribute in any way to the channel or if you have any practical suggestions like in this case something I could use to improve my videos. So basically the more technical type of uh, messages. For any more personal stuff, please use either my inbox here on YouTube, you know, regular message, or on Facebook. And by the way, people have of course suggested the uh, Ivan heads that Zombie Go Boom uses, and I'm well aware of those. I'm just not particularly happy with those. You know, from the videos in which they've used them, it seems to me that the main problem is they just don't really simulate the skin, which in case of a zombie, I guess it's not much of a problem, but uh, I noticed that when they strike them with especially blunt objects that the thing just kind of tends to tear apart and the individual pieces just are flying around and also they use way too much blood in my opinion, so I am i don't really think that's particularly realistic. Uh, the skulls themselves, yeah, they are probably pretty close to the real thing, but the rest that's surrounding it just that isn't really doesn't really suit my requirements. So yeah, I'll be working on this. Hopefully the final result will be pretty close to the real thing. I am now in contact with uh, medical professionals who can also give me their input on something. You know, they have of course a better way of estimating how realistic something is based on the experience they have with uh, surgery and dissecting bodies and, and all kinds of things. <laughs> the messy stuff. So uh, that's gonna be helpful. And um, yeah, finally I have done one more experiment with alternative material, which this I consider to be a failed experiment, so that's why I'm just putting it at the end of this video after all the blah blah. Um, just so you can see what else I've been trying. This here definitely doesn't really work out. That's It's not very realistic and that's basically just, yeah, like I said, failed experiment. But um, yeah, you may still find it interesting to see what else I've been up to and uh, how it turned out. So I'll let you check that out and thanks for watching, as always. What I have here is two wooden dowels. You can see the size here compared to my thumb. Those have been soaked in water for about two hours, uh, surrounded by pool noodles, which is basically just a very dense type of foam. And that's then wrapped in sarin wrap, and just regular plastic wrap as you would use in the kitchen. Then this is wrapped in a layer of the ballistic gel that I have, clear ballistics, 20% gel, and that again wrapped in plastic. And then finally I'm going to wrap the entire shebang in this foam here, which is just from a from an exercise mat. So, pretty tear resistant type of foam. So this thing is roughly the size of a thigh, even though of course the <laughs> two bone substitutes don't really fit. Who the hell has two small bones in their thigh? But, you know, otherwise format is relatively close, although it is wider than thick. And this thing is really, feels very tough. It really didn't get very far into the material, so it's about this deep maybe, which is not surprising considering that this is a very narrow blade optimized for thrusting.
I went about this far. Not a very deep cut. Well, I have a suspicion that the tire setup is not ideal. It might simply absorb unreasonably much of the impact. So let's try it in this direction so that it can actually hit the wall. Yeah, that did considerably more damage. You can see that's quite a noticeable cut in the dowel. So I really think it needs a bit more resistance here. Because with the gel and the foam, I already have quite a bit of, de of impact absorption. So if, it, if then the tire itself also swings, it's simply too much.